Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. In this lecture, we will be focusing on the summary and background of the play The Blood Wedding written by Federico Lorca. Some key facts about this play. The full title of the play is Blood Wedding. It has been written in 1932, published on first stage in 1933. It belongs to the literal period of modernism. It is a rural tragedy. The genre is drama and it took place in Spain. The climax is the moments after Leonardo and the bride slinks away in the dark woods an old bigger woman who represents death appears and screams twice, turning her back to the audience and opening her coat like a great bird with huge wings means the climax is when Leonardo and the bride they slink away in the dark woods it starts and then Leonardo and the bridegroom and the bride these three are in the forest two are dead in the end and it's a tragedy okay the historical context of the blood wedding although blood wedding presents itself as a work of realism it is a work of realism it becomes progressively symbolic there are two symbols in this play that makes this play symbolic play this is likely due to the influence on lower cause work of symbolism which emerged in the early 20th century symbolism was largely a reaction to naturalism Naturalism was dominant in literary philosophy and theory in literature and theater throughout the last decades of the 19th century when playwrights like Chekhov and Ibsen wrote many texts that examined the effect of external words on, on humans. Under symbolism though, artists began exploring more abstract and figurative methods of depicting the human experience. What's more, the turn of the century also brought Cubism, Expressionism, and eventually Surrealism. Lorca was undoubtedly affected by all these movements, especially because he became close friends with the Surrealist painter Salvador Dali, and a number of other artists who were experimenting with how to present perspective and subjectivity in arts. Giving these influences, it's unsurprising that the most climatic scenes in blood wedding draw upon highly symbolic and surreal techniques, with characters appearing on stage to represent the mood and death. Very symbolic characters, these are two symbols that makes the play, as I told you earlier, symbolic. In this sense, blood wedding is a combination of naturalism because it is uh, the effect of the external world on the characters in the play and other more expressive, expressive literary techniques like symbolism is there as the play blends uh, realistic elements also with abstractions and figuration. Other books related to Blood Wedding. Blood Wedding is the first play in what's commonly referred to as Federico Lorca's rural trilogy. Uh, as such, it is uh, helpful to consider this text alongside the two other works. These works are Yerma and the House of Bernarda Alva. In Yerma, Lorca explores the pressure women felt in the early 20th century in rural Spanish communities to have children, ultimately examining themes of passion and inheritance. These both themes uh, have been discussed in the play The Blood Wedding. Furthermore, the house of Bernarda Alba resembles uh, elements of blood wedding. And what are those elements? Uh, it looks at the effect of tragedy on a family. As the titular character uh, forces their daughters to continue mourning her husband's death, their husband's death. Also, given the blood wedding is a play about feuding families and forbidden love, there is a clear parallel between this play and Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, which is perhaps the most famous works about revenge and clandestine appears. Now, the summary of this play, Act 1, Scene 1, a young man referred to simply as the bridegroom, enters his home and he tells his mother that he is going out to cut some grapes from the vineyard. 
This makes his mother anxious is she curses the invention of knives and anything that can cut a man's body. Why? Because she reminisces about the death of the bridegroom's father and brother, both of whom were murdered by a family in this play, Felix uh, family. She complains about the fact that the murders have only been imprisoned and thus they are still alive, a punishment she finds unsatisfactory for these killers, murderers. Are you going to stop? asked the bridegroom, wanting to change the subject, though she continues to talk about violence and death, saying she doesn't like it when he leaves the, ho leaves the house because she fears something will happen to him like his father and brother. Eventually, the bridegroom succeeds in distracting her by talking about his plans to get married. When he brings this up, his mother expresses her happiness for him, though she points out that she doesn't know the young woman and that the entire audience is moving quite fast. Still, she says she knows the bride is good and she agrees to meet her and her father that Sunday to make the wedding plans official. When the bridegroom leaves, a neighbor enters and speaks of, to his mother. Now look at this discussion. Who asks if she knows anything about the girl her son is about to marry. And the neighbor explains that the bride is an attractive young woman who lives far away with her father. The problem is her, her mother is dead. The neighbor says, adding that her mother never loved her husband. The other thing she aids, she informs the bridegroom's mother that the bride was in a serious relationship with Leonardo Felix. In fact, they almost got married, but then Leonardo ended up marrying the girl's cousin. Hearing this, the old woman is distraught, bemoaning the fact that her son's bride has been associated with Felix's family. But the neighbor tells her to be uh, uh, reasonable, pointing out that Leonardo was only eight years old when the violence between their families took place. So now don't worry about these matters. The act one scene two starts that Leonardo's wife and mother in uh, La they are trying to quiet Leonardo's babies by singing about a horse who's, uh, who refuses to drink from a stream because its hooves are bleeding into the water. Not long after the baby finally goes down, Leonardo enters and claims that he's be, he has been at the blacksmith getting new horse shoes since his horse frequently ruins his shoes. When his wife suggests that this happens because he overworks the horse, Leonardo claims that he hardly ever rides him. However, his wife says that her neighbor claimed to have seen him the previous day on the other side of the planks, which is quite far away. Nevertheless, Leonardo denies this, though his mother-in-law catches a glimpse of horse and points out that it looks as if it has come from the end of the world. Seeing her husband's anger mount, the wife changes the subject by telling him that the bridegroom is asking for her cousin's hand in the marriage. Now he comes to know that the bride is going to marry to the bridegroom. Unfortunately, though, this only puts him in a worse mood when his mother-in-law suggests that the bridegroom's mother isn't very happy about the wedding. He says that one needs watching, referring to the bride. Just then a young girl enters and tells them that she saw the bridegroom and his mother buying extra and gifts for the bride and when she begins to describe the stockings they bought, Leonardo snaps at her, saying, we couldn't care less. He then storms out of the house, waking the baby as he goes, because he got angry. It's Sunday, the bridegroom and his mother travel four hours to meet with the bride and her father. When the father enters, he immediately begins talking about his land proudly saying that he has had to punish it in order to make it yield Esparto carbs since it's so dry. 
hearing how interested in him, in land he is the bridegroom's mother assures him that they won't be asking for anything in the way of a dowry since their vineyards are already so prosperous the father then fantasizes about joining their land saying he would love to see all the property together which would be a thing of beauty going on the two parents agree that the wedding should take place on the following thursday which is also the bride's 22nd birthday that's what my son would have been if he were still alive the mother notes but the father tells her not to dwell on such morbid matters though she assures him she will think about it every minute until she dies before long the bride enters and accepts the gift from the bridegroom mother is she does so the mother notices that she's quite solemn so she takes her chin in her hand and says you know what's getting married is child when the bride says she does the bridegroom's mother lists what she believes marriage entails saying a man children and is for the rest a wall that's 2 feet thick agreeing with this the bride says i know my duty and the bridegroom and his mother take their leave alone the bride's servant urges her to open her gifts but the bride is uninterested in these material items for god's sake the servant cries it's easy if you have no wish to get married she then reveals that she saw leonardo on his horse the night before she saw him by the bride's window at first the bride denies this calling the servant a liar but she soon gives up this act and admits that the servant is right leonardo was there act 2 scene 1 starts and it's the morning of the wedding the servant helps the bride get ready when she tries to affix a wreath of orange blossoms which the bridegroom got her to her hair though the bride tosses the flowers on the floor child don't tempt fate by throwing the flowers on the floor the servant says don't you want to get married instead of answering the bride only references a cold wind moving through her though she then says she loves the bride groom but it's a very big step she adds this is a very big step she still loves leonardo that's why she does not take care of the flowers and she is not interested in this marriage Partly thereafter, Leonardo arrives and enters the room. He is the first wedding guest to come, and the servant tells the bride not to let him see her in her undergarments. Though she ignores this and has an intense conversation with Leonardo, who notes that the bridegroom should have gotten her a smaller orange blossom, which would suit her better. They then. fall into impatient argument about the fact that the bride refused to marry leonardo when they were together because he was not rich enough now this is they are discussing their past why didn't they marry each other and she says because he was not rich as a result leonardo married her cousin but he has never stopped thinking about the bride now though he knows he must tell her how he feels about her since she is about to marry to keep quiet and burn is the greatest punishment we can heap upon ourselves he says when she tells him her plan to shut herself away with the bride groom and loves him above everything and though she wants to remain strong she says she loves the bride groom she admits that the mere sound of his voice weakens her will power at which point the servant forces leonardo to leave soon enough the bridegroom and the wedding guests stream into the house going to her future husband the bride expresses her desire to speed the wedding along saying i want to be your wife and be alone with you and not to hear any other voice but yours why be he she is in a hurry because she wants to avoid thinking about leonardo 
she also says she wants him to hold her so tightly that she won't be able to free herself because her passion of love forces her to free herself from this wedding thus she wants her husband to hold her tightly so that she won't be able to free herself even if she want to with this the couple sets out for the church and just sing about the joyous occasion is they follow when everybody is gone Leonardo's wife expresses her frustration that he doesn't seem to care about her. She knows her husband is in love with the bride, indicating that she knows she is being thrown aside by her husband. Though he does nothing to make her feel better. Act two, scene two. The scene starts after the marriage ceremony. The married. couple and their guests return to the bride's father house where they dance and make merry as the party begins the bride groom's mother talk to the bride's father about the prospects of having grandchildren the father for his part is especially excited for his son to have children since this will mean he will have more people to work on his farm without wages as happy conversations like these take place the bride remains sullen and unenthusiastic eventually excusing herself to lie down because she has a headache shortly thereafter leonardo's wife comes rushing through the party looking for leonardo and the crowd discovers that the two ex lovers leonardo and the bride have eloped riding up into the woods on the hill Hearing this, the bride's groom's mother urges the bride's father to round up his family members to chase Leonardo down. To chase Leonardo down, the hour of blood has come again. She said, "What she was worried throughout her life has come again." The scene three takes place in the woods in the forest. Several woodcutters talk about. The runaway lovers filling the role of a traditional Greek chorus. They are acting like chorus. Although these woodcutters want the bride and Leonardo to escape unharmed, a personified version of the moon soon appears. This is symbolic appearance, appearance, and reveals its desire to shed light upon the forest so that the lovers won't go undetected. What's more? an old beggar woman another symbol who represent death according to the to lorca stage note appears and asserts that leonardo and the bride will not make it past the nearby stream soon the bride groom and groom and soon the bride groom and the young man ride up and talk about the chase when his helper suggest that they turn back the bride groom says he can't because of his family history with the felix family At this point he stumbles into the beggar's woman who joins the search for Leonardo and the bride. Just as they leave though the lovers emerge and talk about and talk about the dangers of what they have done. The bride regrets run away but only because doing so has endangered Leonardo. Nevertheless they both decide that nothing but death will separate them. Moments after they leave, two piercing screams fill the dark woods. These were the screams of the old lady. F three scene two starts after the wedding ceremony. After the wedding, three little girls play with a bundle of red yarn and discuss what happened, wondering why none of the guests have returned from the ceremony. Finally the old bigger woman appears and tells them that the bridegroom and Leonardo have both died. When she and the little girls leave the bridegroom's mother and her neighbor enter and discuss the tragedy. All of them are dead now the mother says. At midnight I'll sleep I'll sleep and not to be afraid of a gun or a knife. As she moans she refuses to cry. not wanting her other neighbors who are beginning to enter the room to see her fall apart however when the bride arrives she finds it difficult to withhold her anger you would have gone too 
the young woman insists. I was a woman burning, full of pain inside and out, and your son was a tiny drop of water that I hoped would give me children, land, health. Continuing, she says that Leonardo was like a dark river that swept her away. Such beautiful dialogues. Unable to stop herself, the bridegroom's mother slaps the bride who readily accepts this punishment, telling the old woman that she merely wants to weep with her. As such, the bridegroom's mother says she can cry by the door, admitting that nothing matters to her anymore. At this point, the two women begin to speak in verse, trading lines and bemoaning the loss of their loved ones as people file and saw. Now let's discuss a brief biography of Federico Garcia Lorca. Lorca's father was a successful farmer married to a teacher. They together raised four children, for which Federico Lorca was the eldest. When the author was 10 years old, the family moved to Granada. When Lorca enrolled, where Lorca enrolled in a Catholic school as well as a secular institute run by a Roman Catholic church. Later, Lorca attended the University of Granada where it took him nine years to earn a degree on account of his unimpressive schoolwork. An, impress, an impatient pianist, he traded music for writing when he was a young man, eventually befriending several artists including filmmaker Louis Bunuel and painter Thalabader Dali. In 1919, he wrote his first play, The Butterfly's Evil Spell, which was composed in verse. Unfortunately, it was largely made fun by the critics and thus only run for shows. In the 1920s, Lorca became associated with Spanish avant-garde scene, publishing both poetry and plays, including Gypsy Ballads, his most popular poetry collection, which came in 1928. After a brief stint in New York City in 1929, the author returned to Spain during Primo de Rivera's dict dictatorial rule, at which point he began touring as an actor and director of a theater troupe that brought plays, plays to rural communities throughout the country. It was during this period that he penned three plays that are known as a Rural Trilogy which includes Blood Wedding, Yerma, and The House of Bernarda Alba. As he presented these plays, he became known for his socialist beliefs because of Spanish fascist government at the time, though he was arrested in 1936 on the same day that his brother-in-law was assassinated after having accepted the position of mayor in Granada. It is said that Lorca himself was assassinated for political reasons the following day, though some people uphold that there were other factors that contributed to his execution. This was all about the play, The Blood Wedding. Thank you so much.